Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. Today, Kyle Bauer is at the Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company in Salina, where he catches up with Mike Samples, the longtime facility manager, who explains how they work with both local and national livestock buyers and sellers. Next is the weekly Kansas soybean update, and then we meet Dan Mason, a cattle producer who is there selling his livestock. We'll finish with Alan Geiger, a local cattle buyer. It's all coming up on Farm Factor. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. This segment is brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Good morning and welcome back to Farm Factor. Today, Kyle Bauer visits first with Mike Samples, the longtime facility manager at Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company of Salina. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer from Salina, Kansas with the uh, farmers at the Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company. I have Mike Samples. He's a longtime manager of this facility. Mike, uh, tell us about your facility and what you do here at Farmers and Ranchers. We're a livestock auction. Uh, we sell cattle for people all over the country. We also have horse sales. We do have hog sales on Monday morning. Uh, we're the largest livestock auction in the state of Kansas. Uh, we pride ourselves in that. We pride ourselves in uh, trying to have an active market on all classes of cattle and horses and hogs that we sell. When you say active market, what do you mean by that? Having buyers for all classes of cattle, that's the main thing we look for is, is having somebody here to buy, and not just one or two, but maybe three or four on different classes of cattle, so we sure get the top of the market for everything we have. Tell me, I'm going to ask you about your typical buyer, but first, tell me about your typical seller. Our sellers are very... Uh, spread out group of sellers. We get cattle from uh, lots of different states and lots of different places uh, and then of course we get local cattle from oh, uh, easily a hundred mile radius of Salina and then like next week we've got some people, folks that own a ranch in Shamrock, Texas. They're sending all of their home raised Angus source calves to us so we get them from all over the country. Why would someone send cattle all the way from Texas here? Because we're nice people. We have a very active market uh, we pride ourselves in uh, selling all classes of cattle to the top of the market. Well, so if people go to the, to the uh, effort to Angus source their cattle or fall vaccinate their cattle or wean their cattle, we advertise that. We talk about We talk about when the cattle come in. We don't just sell the cattle. We try to uh, provide a strong market for their cattle, just not a market. Now, once they're sold, tell me about the buyers that come in. What's your typical buyer or most of your buyers look like? Our buyers are everything just like our, our producers are. Uh, we have buyers from that are corporate buyers that buy for the major corporations, the Cargills, the Five Rivers, the, uh, all those different kinds there, the cactus. Then we have a lot of farmer buyers, a lot of people that buy their own calves. We have a lot of northern people come down here and buy their own calves and yearlings uh, and take them back to feed them their corn in Nebraska and Iowa. When you have a cow herd, all the cattle are not the same. They're different sizes. They're different sexes. Um, that's a big part of what you're able to do at a sale barn. It is. It is. We can sell everything from a, a butcher cow, butcher bull, to a stock cow. We have special stock cow sales. And then everything, some producers like to sell their calves right off the cow, sell four or five weight calves. Some producers like to wean their cattle, sell seven, eight, nine weight yearlings. So we, we have a market for all classes of cattle. This is Kyle Bauer visiting with Mike Samples in Salina at the Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company. Folks, stay with us. Kyle will be back in a moment with more from Mike Samples. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 a.m. on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio 
or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the Plains. We would like to join your management team. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas Farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Let's join Kyle and Mike as they discuss how this sale barn has changed over the last 28 years. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer continuing to visit with Mike Samples about the Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company in Salina, Kansas. Mike, uh, you've been here a long time. Tell me how the barn has changed over the years. I came here in 1987. The barn was uh, pretty run down at that time. Business was really slow. We've uh, slowly but surely built the barn up. Uh, we've built a lot of new facilities, uh, put on a lot of feed pens, built our business up by, by giving customers a good market and being fair with them and, and based in their trust in us by a handshake and do whatever we tell them we're going to do. Now, talk about feed pens. Um, you use those feed pens really regularly. Constantly, constantly. Uh, wish we had more. Wish we had more uh, property, but we're we're landlocked with the the Corps of Engineers dike, flood dike behind us. So we built all the pens we have. The only way, Kyle, we can continue to have the numbers of cattle we have is to use more sales. We have these special calf and yearling sales, wean vaccinate sales, different things. We can have those on a Tuesday, come back on Thursday, have another three or four thousand cattle, and therefore we use our pens a lot. Now tell me about online bidding. When did you start? How does it work? About 15, 20 years ago, we signed up with DV Auction. It's an online internet bidding deal. People can set at home, watch the internet, watch our sale live, and bid on the cattle. We switched to Cattle USA a few years ago. Uh, I had no problems with either one of those. They're both good companies. Uh, but Cattle USA just kind of had a better buyer base for our cattle and our business. So we are on there. People can set at home, bid on anything they want. They can buy cows, whatever they want to do. They can put pot loads of feeder cattle together. Uh, they really like that. People just don't have time to come and sell, so they set at home and buy their cattle. Now, when I drive by, though, there's a lot of vehicles in the parking lot. It appears to me buying cattle in person is still the preferred method. It's still the best way, Kyle. It really is. People come, they see see way up condition quality of the cattle right there rather than looking on a camera. And uh, so it, it's it's still the best way. The corporates, most of the corporates, they send a company man or a, a order buyer to buy their cattle. And, of course, the people that buy their calves and stuff have an order buyer come and do it themselves. Now talk about continued change in the industry over the years. Uh, there's, there's always a lot of different ways of selling cattle. Do you see trends that have come, maybe come and gone, or where we're headed? Oh, uh, we've seen it all. I mean, the, the livestock auction still is the only way to get true price discovery of your cattle. You have several different people bidding on your cattle, where if you sell them in the country privately, you get one bid, one guy's idea, uh, so you're stuck there. Uh, Superior, some of those companies, they sell a lot of country cattle, but that's not for everybody else. What we're seeing in the livestock industry right now is the sale barns are coming back into popularity uh, because of the, the bidding uh, price discovery of the cattle. Another thing is that you get that day's market that day. You don't sell your cattle today, deliver them a month from now, and if the market's $10, $15 higher, you're really sick. Or if it goes down, I guess you're happy. But people like selling on that day's market, getting their check that day, and being done with it. We're visiting with Mike Samples. He's the manager and owner of Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission in Salina, Kansas. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Up next is this week's Kansas soybean update, so don't go away.
Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. We're joined now by Wade Callen, a Texas soybean producer and president of the American Soybean Association. And Wade, the talk continues about GMO labeling. You have been a part of the Coalition for Safe and Affordable Food, who really looks at that issue and, and talks about and supports why this needs to be done as far as one federal mandate is concerned. You need a federal standard. We can't have a patchwork. We had the fly-in last month where we went into Washington, D.C. It was very good because not only did we have farmers in the room, but we had producers. And it doesn't just affect us as farmers because it's going to affect us on our bottom line because it's going to mean that the costs get pushed down to us. But when you're talking about our manufacturers that send food out and it goes all over the country now because you're in an age where they don't really have control over where that product goes because of the internet and everything. We've really said, and it's really been a good message for us, is that we agree that a consumer has a right to know what's in their food. And, and if, there's, if they're concerned about GM or, or staying away from it, let's have a national label let's have a national standard that's voluntary and that says if you want to label your food as non-gm then you can have a voluntary label and you can have that label certified by the usda so then if i'm a consumer and i'm really concerned about that and i look at that label and i know usda has certified this is 100 percent gmo free i know what i got and so it's a very easy fix it's a deal that gets the information to the consumer that wants that information because the way it is now you've got exceptions and you've got the vermont gives an exception for products that are really big in vermont so do you really know what's in that food or not and we need a national standard and we need a standard that says this is what you do to say that there's none. Probably the most pertinent example I can give is we were in the room and, and the biggest pork rind manufacturer in the country is there and, and they said every state that does this, it adds a million dollars to our bottom line. And he says we're in an industry where we're dealing on margins that are not on the cents, they're on the hundredth of a cent. There's not that kind of money to deal with this. And so it would be a bad thing for some day to have two or three or five or what, however many different patchwork estates. And you wake up and all of a sudden you can't get that product that you need in the market anymore. Wade, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wade Cowan, who is president of the American Soybean Association, is our guest on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay tuned as Kyle visits with Dan Mason, a local cattle producer. Biodiesel, made from sustainable resources, is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, 
selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964, heinenbrothersag.com. This segment brought to you by Heinen Brothers Egg. Farmers helping farmers by offering quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, egg chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia. Call today to protect your crop yield. Welcome back. Let's catch up with Kyle and Dan as they discuss how the Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company is a great resource for livestock sellers. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer from Salina at the Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company. I have with me Dan Mason. Now, Dan is selling cattle today. The sale hasn't started yet, so we're able to stand here in the ring. Uh, Dan, tell me about your cow herd. Well, I run uh, 80 crossbred cows. They're crossbred uh, Angus and Shorthorn, and I breed them to purebred Angus bulls. And why is it you pick the Angus Shorthorn cross? Oh, I, Angus, everything that seems to be black seems to be the market, but I do like the Shorthorn Cross for uh, ease of handling the cattle, and uh, they just seem to be a very substantial breed. So you're selling here at Salina today. Um, why do you sell at a sale barn? Sale barn seems to be the best market for uh, average to smaller producer like myself. Uh, we're exposed to uh, a lot more buyers that way versus just a private treaty sale. Now your cow herd, um, do you calve, when do you calf and is this your entire calf uh, harvest right now? This is the majority of my calf crop. I calf, start calving in January with my heifers and then my cows follow in February and March. And so you normally sell this time of year? Yes, this seems to fit. If I wean in August, late August, then uh, I can background them for a few months and then sell them in November. Now we're actually at a special calf sale today rather than their regular cattle sale. Why is it you chose to sell at a special calf sale? Actually I just asked Mike Samples what he recommends and he knows the market and he gives me the day that uh, probably the most advantageous for, for my sale. Well, and the Livestock um, Commission Company Operators, um, they are a resource for you. Oh yes, those guys know the cattle market. Uh, I can produce calves and uh, take good care of my cattle, but I always ask the professionals on what the best way to market my cattle. How was your grazing season this year? How were the gains, How, how the size of your calf crop? Is it uh, larger, smaller, or normal? Calf crop's good. I've been uh, building back up after some very dry years, and we've had good grass the last two years. We're visiting with Dan Mason at Salina, Kansas. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Stay tuned here to Farm Factor as Kyle visits with a local cattle buyer from Chase County, Alan Geiger. That interview is coming up next. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotating cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. And I'm not gonna go out and dig trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. 
Lecompton, the name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. Lecompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. Visit the Territorial Capital Museum where more than 70 trees are displayed with thousands of antique and vintage ornaments. And be sure to stop in the gift shops in both Lecompton museums. Spend the day in historic Lecompton, shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Let's listen now as Alan Geiger explains why he's buying cattle locally this year. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer, continuing our interviews at Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission in Salina. Have the opportunity to visit with Alan Geiger. Um, Alan, uh, where is your farming and ranching operation and what does it look like? We're over in Chase County by Elmdale and uh, we have a cow-calf operation and a small feed lot. We also do uh, row crop. Um, so do you normally buy cattle here at Salina? Last few years we've been using a cattle buyer. Uh, He's been purchasing the cattle out of uh, Missouri and we have them shipped home and, and then finished. So why have you changed that? Well the margins are a lot tighter this year and we thought maybe if we could buy locally we could save some on some freight. Yeah. Will the cattle you buy match up with some of the cattle you've raised at home? Yes, we have a, a fall herd and a spring herd. Uh, the fall cattle seem to be working a little better for us as we can finish them out uh, earlier in the year and, and uh, kind of hit the market a little better. Normally when I think about Chase County in that area, I think about summer grazing, uh, but you're obviously buying these cattle not to graze? Right, they go into the feedlot. Uh, we market most of our cattle through Creekstone uh, Farms down in Ark City, and uh, it's just been another enterprise that we've added that's it's been real helpful to our uh, operation recently. You'll normally feed those cattle then all the way to processing weight? Yes, we do. Uh -huh. So how has your summer been there in uh, Chase County as far as moisture and grazing? We did real good up until August. August, September, October has been very dry, uh, but overall it was a good crop year and a good grass year, good hay year. In your backgrounding operation, what will you use as feedstuffs? We use uh, mostly home-raised uh, commodities. We use the, our own corn. We buy our protein supplements, probably uh, mostly DDG. And then uh, we uh, have our own hay that we grind and, and raise our own silage. And what weight cattle you, will you be looking at for today? Oh, over six and a half, preferably six and a half to seven weights. Steers or heifers? Uh, steers. Tell me about your cow herd. Uh, what, what breed are they? You mentioned they were both spring and fall. Well, since we market the Creekstone, our, our uh, cows are all Angus-based. Uh, we've been using some... Uh, Hybrid bulls, some, some Angus Simital bulls uh, recently, it's been working real well for us. So are you done calving for the fall? Yes, we're, we're completely done with that. So, And your spring calves, when will they start? Uh, they, we usually start around the 1st of March. We're visiting with Alan Geiger here in Salina, Kansas. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks again for joining us at the Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company in Salina. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. We're here every Tuesday on Ag AM in Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. 
the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com.